for kind of a conflict between the two. You'll see this uh, demonstrated in Fort Worth right now. Uh, Fort Worth had many, many locations downtown that had been there for many years, operating quite happily. And then as Fort Worth began to draw more residents downtown from some of their new developments, the residents began to complain about that that bar down the street is kind of noisy. It's open till 2 a.m. So the question is, what do you do to try to mesh those two uses uh, harmoniously or as harmoniously as possible without having to drag the police department into it every time that somebody uh, you know, thinks that the music's too loud or the wrong time of the day or something like that. So that's the purpose for this. Of course, it was a request from Mayor Buford uh, that we take a look at it. So that is the introduction. Well, and let me just say why I want to take a look at it. was because this and I had a conversation with other we're talking about, we're, we're moving along, we're going to talk about it later, about the, the park over here, the Old Town Park Plaza. And we're hoping that that will serve some restaurants, and patio dining and things, and they, they want to have some sort of light music out there. They may we may have a band show in that park. They want to have little small concerts there, or people sit out there and play their guitars and sing and stuff. So we need to have some kind of a plan put in place that would allow that for that, like you said, the police had to be called. Very good. So we'll talk a little bit about the state law and how our city ordinance reads currently, uh, what those issues are there. Uh, I'm going to show you a chart that talks about the, some noise levels and what those decibel levels are. Uh, we've got about three options for boundaries for an Old Town Entertainment District if you were to choose to do that. And I'll talk a little bit about enforcement issues. Uh, we'll, real quick review about the surrounding cities and their ordinances, how they deal with it uh, in places similar to what we're talking about doing here. Uh, and then looking to you guys for some information. So under state law, uh, noise complaints are covered under disorderly conduct. As when you create an unreasonable noise in a public place, that, you know, other than a uh, sporting range or in a private uh, residence, you have no right to occupy. That's deemed, uh, you know, uh, disorderly conduct. Unreasonable noise is uh, well, I already already kind of gave you that, but it, it also becomes a de facto. Uh, unreasonable noise if they've been warned previously by a magistrate or a peace officer and the noise level exceeds 85 decibels on the eight weighting scale that becomes a de facto unreasonable noise now does it mean that noise less than 85 decibels could also be deemed unreasonable yeah probably probably does but i'll tell you this in, in doing enforcement for a lot of years in texas peace officers like to have some kind of this you know some uh, some uh, objective kind of a uh, you know definition of what it is they don't want to use subjectivity in it if they can measure it out on the sound meter. And we do carry those around, by the way. If they can measure it out like that and use that as a guide to go by, they're going to likely do that. And my guess, even the first warning is going to be something around the 85 decibels or, or something. Yeah, this? Well, it, it, it depends. For the state law, it's pretty wherever they can hear it from. Yeah, the further 
the distance, obviously, the, the less decibel we will be. In our city ordinance, we actually more narrow the some distances that we measure from, and, and I'll show you that here in a second. Uh, we have a general statement in our city ordinance that talks about what uh, that noise is prohibited. Uh, you're not so for you to make, a, make or allow uh, excessive or unnecessary noise in a volume, intensity, repetitiveness, or duration that's clearly audible. That is offensive to a reasonably prudent adult person within 100 feet of the noise source or within any area of, uh, or any area within the target line of the parcel lot upon which the noise or the source of noise is emanating, whichever is greater. That's the key thing that we, that we keep in mind. <clears throat> we go further in, in the city ordinance under seven different subsections to talk about all types of noise we say is deemed unnecessary and, and unreasonable. The one that most uh, distinctly applies in this case to the outside uh, or doing the entertainment district has to do with the, the radios, TVs, musical instruments, sound applying equipment, that kind of thing. And in there we say that the playing of those, uh, those things uh, to such a volume that it's clearly audible to a person in his residence and during these conditions, during the, during the day or night in a single family dwelling, it measures more than 65 decibel, okay? Or daytime in a multifamily uh, dwelling, it measures more than 65 in an adjacent unit. Or nighttime in a multifamily dwelling that we're, where it can be clearly audible within your unit. Now, another part of that also prohibits amplification of the human voice when the sound is clearly audible from 50 feet on the public property. Public property, if you recall, too, in a previous definition, public property is pretty much any property that the public or a substantial group of the public has access to. A lot of people think when you say public property, that means property owned by the government. It doesn't really mean that. It just means places where people can frequent pretty, you know, pretty easily. Common areas, uh, hospitals, shopping places, you know, any of that kind of thing. Streets and sidewalks? Yes, absolutely. Streets and sidewalks. Uh, prohibits also the operation of radios, the stereo receiver, amplifier, sound amplifying equipment, all that stuff, in such a manner that it be clearly audible at the distance of 50 feet, or in such a manner that the vibration can't be plainly felt at the distance of 50 feet from its source, even if the vibration or bass reverberation is felt inside a complaining person's residence perceptible without an issue. And we, yeah, we, we get a lot of those kinds of complaints. And of course, typically, this is a great language in an ordinance. It's really difficult to enforce. Lots of times we get into situations where we'll be called about that. We really, we get there, the sound is quit happening, or we can't really feel it. Yes. When you lay down and the blood settles in your head, you feel in your head. Your heart doesn't beat like that. You don't hear it, but you feel that vibration from yeah. your head. It's kind of I got that. I'm glad you added that. I'm just going to tell the officer, lay down right here. Just lay down. <laughs> We actually do that. I don't think I've had a guy lay down before. We actually will go the, to the uh, residence. The so-called auto wound box exactly. amendment that was done several years ago because of the autos that have the, the big face speakers. I was talking about the party next door. Your, your neighbor's playing too much that stuff. Too. But the uh, base speakers don't uh, register on a desk when you're in low frequency. And when you sit up, you don't hear, feel it anymore. But when you lay down, well, there you go. You can start doing you know, this issue came a lot seriously for us. Uh, Sneaky Pete's for years has had loud parties outside, and the people across the, the bay there uh, in the little townhomes, they would feel the reverberations. And really, didn't, and the loudness of the noise wasn't really perceptible much from inside, but they could feel the vibrations. And so, a lot of the reasons why we added this to all of this was so we could deal with those kind of things. And, and we do have to deal with those from time to time. The other thing is to cite that's, that's also by the ordinance that to be deemed the loud or unreasonable the same noise and outdoor music festival where the, the volume is allowed to exceed 70 decibels uh, at the perimeter of that event. And just for a point of reference, you know, we've, we've done that in some of our city sponsored events, even though we're actually exempt from the city <coughs> ordinance, and we frequently don't exceed that 70 decibels. So, you know, that's actually pretty good for us. And then listed here are some of the exemptions for that. Of course, city sponsored events that we're involved in, we do. Horns or, uh, horns or devices allowed by law that be sirens and such. Uh, bells and music boxes, boxes on ice cream vendors, city operators, city sponsored events, and athletic events conducted by LISD in the city. We have that for the Big Drum Festival they did every year at the Louisville High School, which causes us great grief all the time. <laughs> Here's some examples of some, of some common noises and what their decibel level readings are. Uh, you can see traffic actually pretty high between 70 to 80 decibels. That's typically at street level within 
you know, 25, 30 feet perhaps. Uh, one, one interesting one, probably the reason why the state level is, is defined as it is, hearing loss begins at 85 decibels when it's prolonged and, and continuing for quite a bit of, you know, quite a time. OSHA has a lot of, you know, requirements for folks who work in environments like that. But anyway, some interesting uh, things. Uh, jet engine at 100 feet and a gun blast, 140 decibels. And they're all pretty loud. So, I'm going to show you three different boundary options that Nika and the uh, patient put together for us just to kind of give you an idea of what we're talking about. Uh, boundary one, of course, would be, uh, you, know, you probably can see the streets a little bit easier in uh, this view. Here to the, here, here to, the, to the west, north to Walters, east over, you know, Mill Street to the north, Keeley, as far east as uh, over to, what's that, Henrietta? Harris. 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 And then down south of Elm Street. So that kind of gives you a sense of, you know, what that looks like. If we expand it a little bit more, you know, we do what I call the Chevrolet emblem. We make it a little bit further to the north, <coughs> block it off to the west over here, and go a little, a little bit further south, uh, a little bit further east. Where you can see the, the streets and, the, uh, and particularly the zoning areas that are, that are being affected here. And then, I don't know if you call this a paintball gun or a phaser or what, <laughs> but this really expands it so that it goes you know, pretty far east down that main street in the corner to the interstate. That's a mosquito boomerang. Huh? That's a mosquito. I guess it goes in the way. Anyway, pretty far out west of the interstate, <laughs> east out towards the railroad tracks, and then south along the uh, Mill Street corridor to get to the interstate. <laughs> Chief, uh, which one of those gets the closest to the main train station? This one. Okay, so anytime you loud noise outside, I'm going to tell you you're going to get complaints. That's just the fact. It's going to happen. So if we were to do things uh, like an entertainment district that would promote more development or more outside music entertainment, well, we're going to get more complaints about that. That's just going to be a fact. But for a point of reference, I pulled together the calls that we answered for noise complaints in these three different boundary areas from 2011. And they're really pretty small. Uh, you'll notice that boundary options one and two were the same because basically those reporting districts were the same for both of those boundaries. You know, that boundary is different than what our reporting districts are. But then in the expanded option is still only under 10. That's really pretty small amount of calls over the course of a 12 month period. Not too very much. Uh, the way it stands today, if we have no change to the laws or the ordinances on the books. Officers that are responding have to decide which of those two apply. Is it the city ordinance that we're going to apply? Is it going to be state law? Regardless of what we do, enforcement must appear, must appear fair on its face, and, and, and we have to be consistent about how we do it. You know, and again, that's the challenge that I have is getting you know 139 guys to see it the same way and uh, enforce it the same way. If we were to modify our city ordinance, either way, we can't really supersede state law. So the best the only real control we really have over it is our city ordinance and making modifications if we want to do that. <clears throat> so that takes us to what cities that, that do have events and outside things. What, what have they done about that? Well, Frisco exempted all the noise from the Pizza Hut Park, and they did it on specific uh, days or uh, specific times. <clears throat> so they pretty much say from 7 to 11, Sunday to Thursday, and 7 to 11.30 on Friday and Saturday, any noise that emanates from there pretty much exempt from the city ordinance. Again, for them, state law would still apply, so they would have to deal with it. Talk to Chief Rimshaw over there, and they have done some of that. For every song that's played after 11 or 11.30 at night, that's a ticket. And I think they're up to like 8 in one night that they gave to a particular concert uh, promoter or something out there for the songs that they did. So that, that's how they deal with it for a They They just give them a ticket and they pay the ticket and go I'm pretty sure they do. Yeah. It's like you know, 11.01 on Thursday night. First song is a ticket, second well, song is another ticket, yes. so on. In Grapevine, of course, they had the big Grape Fest, we talked about that, and all the music stuff. They made no changes at all to their ordinances <coughs> whatsoever. And uh, Chief Zombie over there tells me they get very few complaints, if any. In fact, the residents that moved downtown in Grapevine moved there because of all that stuff. In fact, they really don't get any complaints about that. I was super surprised. I figured it'd be one old person over there, just <laughs> the complainer about everything. Yeah. Uh, <coughs> South Lake also has their big uh, town center event that they do. Uh, they have a 
pretty standard looking ordinance that looks a whole lot like everybody else's. I mean, more noise or noises that you see these decibel levels that they've set. Uh, you know, they're, they're pretty conservative decibel levels. You can see those pretty quickly. But they made no, they make no except the exception or exemptions at all for their council or man or any other special events outside. Not that I could tell from the ordinance. Uh, we've talked about it. Fort Worth is considering uh, a change to theirs. They're looking at something kind of like the North Richard Hills ordinance. Uh, they think they're looking at some of those issues that they have, some of the things that happen that are based upon the zoning areas that they have in town. But they're not looking to, to take any action on that or even see kind of proposals from their staff until probably March this year. But we'll, you know, we'll see what they're coming up with. The North Richard Hills ordinance is it's pretty complicated, but again, it's, it's arranged by zones. Uh, the light, light industrial zoning is up to 70 dB uh, from 7 to 7 to 10, and from 10 dB up uh, or actually 70 all the time. Light industrial. They have a medium industrial zoning requirement where they do the uh, 65 from 7 to 10 dB, 55 from 10, 10 dB up to 7 dB. And then they have an office, uh, neighborhood services, and community services zoning, where they do the up to 60, you know, up to 60 from, you know, daylight hours, basically 55 overnight. And then they have heavy commercial and uh, they do other three of that. <coughs> heavy commercial and some other kind of commercial zonings that they have, where they have these uh, 65 and 55 respectively. Arlington made no changes at all to their ordinance or anything to do with their big parks, but they're they're pretty much geographically located where they don't really, if they do create a lot of noise, it doesn't really carry into residential areas too awful much. <coughs> Flower Mount has an ordinance real similar to ours. They either copied us, we either copied them, or we both copied somebody else. I'm not real sure. <coughs> High Village, they just use the definition of unreasonable noise, and it's a little more restricted at night time. They don't use any DB ratings at all for noise levels, so it's all subjective on their, what their alters say. So the way I see it, our options are, are really pretty limited. We can change nothing if you want to, just see where the development comes and you know, decide to sit and do something later. Again, it will be up to our officers that respond to any kind of complaints about noise or loud music to decide if it's city ordinance space, violations that we can work with, or we just going to use state law. <clears throat> we could outlaw uh, all the indoor and outdoor music, except that uh, those things that are sponsored, you know, which are already exempted from the city ordinance, probably needs to push back the current establishments outdoor music venues around the city. Uh, we could inter, uh, exempt indoor and outdoor music entertainment from city ordinance in the, uh, just in that old town entertainment district if we could establish it. Uh, state law would still apply to that, <coughs> even if the noise of the regulation inside. And we, we all typically think it's going to be a patio or maybe a rooftop venue or a band shell or something, but you know, literally it could be it could be a band inside of a club or a restaurant, and if it's loud enough that you can hear from outside or an adjacent unit, that's an issue that we still have to deal with. You know, part of that exemption from the uh, uh, city ordinance could require those venues to establish, you know, what what potential complaints are going to be and offer a mitigation plan on how they're going to deal with that. If they know they're going to interfere with the flower shop next door, so maybe they make contact with them and decide how to, you know, how they're going to deal with that issue and should it come. We can also adopt the, the Frisco model. The, same exemption as we have under number three, but we actually would set the, the limited days and, and hours on those days, just like Frisco does. Only if we did it here, I would suggest noon to 11, Sunday through Thursday, noon to 11.30 on Friday and Saturday. So really kind of puts it to you guys, do you want to do an entertainment district? If so, boundary auction you like? Or do you have another idea for options that, that we did show you for the boundary? And also, what do you prefer for and just play our noise and complaints. We prefer number three or four, if you're asking me. Uh, but it's really kind of, kind of your call. Go back to the top. Uh, no, 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 I'm sorry. No, no, no. From the next last slide. Get that right. Because you, you said you were, your, your preference would be for your. Yeah. <coughs> I'm, I'm good with either one of them. I'm, so the first question is, do we want to have a, a district entertainment district? And then the second question is, if we do want to have an entertainment district, what uh, what rules do you want to do? Governing rules? Variations on those. Do you have any questions? Do you have any questions? I have a question. Since we're talking about potentially developing a district here and we're talking ordinances. Would it be appropriate to throw out 
some other things that have come to mind, for instance, that would be considered under the realm of ordinance in, in this district now? Or are you just dealing with noise? Uh, well, if it would deal with the entertainment district, I guess it would be okay, but I don't know if you want to deal with, like, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, building materials and stuff no, like that. No, no, nothing like that. What is, well, basically, it's, um, it has to, one of the items is the uh, parking on Main Street. And it was requested that we look at perhaps a parking time limit on Main Street. Apparently, it's the business owners to a degree that are, are taking up the parking spaces and, uh, you know, we need to have something for the anticipated uh, clients of those businesses. And, I, and maybe it's been looked at in the past. I, I think know. you could broaden this discussion to include that type of thing, because that is part and parcel of the same type of conflict that we're talking about, where you have people uh, use the example of the Greenville Entertainment District in Dallas, where there's a lot of activity, but then it bleeds over into the residential areas nearby in the form of people parking in the streets and just looking for some place to put their car while they go a block or two over to the local bar. So uh, when you have an entertainment district, I think the idea is that you want to encourage the entertainment, but then you want to have to deal with the <coughs> side effects of the entertainment. Noise is one of them. Parking could be another that could be added to this discussion. We'll see why not. All right. And the other item that I had was the Salvation Army, apparently, uh, in this process of doing the good work they do of feeding the homeless. Well, it's, it's becoming a, an issue with some of the businesses in this area that the homeless are loitering in the area, napping, whatever the case may be. Is that another issue that we want to address now? Or is that something that doesn't really fit with the agenda? If, pardon me? I don't, it, it doesn't really have anything to do with entertainment district. That could happen anywhere in the city. So that's something we would discuss under some of the ordinance. Yeah. Or yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. So and we don't totally, you know, I saw the correspondence that you're referring to, and uh, there is no law that you can pass against loitering. It's unconstitutional. Really? Yeah. We try. Right. There is no law. The old loitering, there, you'll see a lot of cities that have those okay, laws. In fact, right. I think we still have a law in the books that have to do with loitering, but you'll see those or, those local ordinances that have that kind of language, but they've been found to be unconstitutional. That's all I have. Thank you. Did, did, again, did y'all have anything? I know y'all said that when you parked too. Did y'all have anything with that? Oh, we were just being supportive. Okay. Yeah, just comment. I think uh, whether because of sound or other issues as we develop this area and develop the park area there and encourage development along Main Street to take in know, outdoor spaces and make use of them, sooner or later we're going to want the uh, Old Town Entertainment District. I mean, just as a general concept, I think there's great merit in having a set of, uh, well, having a, a definition for what that area is, and then uh, as time goes by, my expectation is that not just sound, but other issues will be tied to that, that, you know, that boundary definition. Uh, as far as, since I have the floor, as far as what I like, um, I have to like boundary two, I have to like option four. So. <clears throat> and one, one of the reasons I like option four, by the way, is that a little bit of concern about option three is that, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, but um, option two, boundary two, option four. Okay, option four. Option four is the times. 
as time goes by. Yes, correct me if I'm wrong, but if we implement the uh, entertainment district boundary and then went with option three, for example, then in the middle of the day, somebody going through the neighborhood on a loud motorcycle <coughs> might find they're exempt. No, I don't think so. We we, we could style the change to the ordinance in that way because uh, there's you know, the, the stuff about the radios and TVs and these measurements is only one of seven areas in the city ordinance that we outlaw. The stuff about loud, you know, like loud equipment. Uh, you know, there's a bunch of other things that it that prohibits. We wouldn't necessarily say that loud motorcycles would be exempt. Let, let me let me recast that. Then, what about somebody driving through the neighborhood hood with a loud radio? Loud radio, yeah, that could be exempt. Unless we're, very, see, unless we're very unless we're very I just see a problem yeah. and, and that's why I'd rather see the hours put on. Of course yeah. not everybody's gonna want to hear a car with a loud radio at eleven o'clock at night. But, sure. But if you're getting you know, if you're gonna create the the exemption for, for other loud music, then unfortunately that's a, a side effect. Yeah, I think we could style the change, any modification of the ordinance so that it was a little, a little bit more specific and didn't allow things like that to you know, to be exempt to okay. just because they have to be done. Based on style of music. <laughs> <laughs> no, but maybe based on whether it's from a fixed location or something. I'll tell you, usually it's not the volume as much as it is the style of music. Yeah. 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 So, anyway, those are my two preferences. Good point. Any other questions or thoughts? Okay, so let's get staff some directions. Do we want to do an Oak Town entertainment? I can support that. I would. Do we need a motion on that, or just just more directional? Okay. Yeah. 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 We can do it. I move that we enact a, uh, an entertainment district around boundary option number two. I'll second that. Okay. We have a motion, and we have a motion by Council Gilmore to do an Oak Town entertainment district for boundary option number two, and a second. A second. I'm sorry. I'm expert. Uh, I'm sorry. Could we separate those? That's what we're doing. We're doing just the boundary right now. Just the boundary? Yes. Okay. And, then and my question on this, we'll, we'll have a discussion. My question on this is, when we do this, would it really prohibit us, much as probably you and Nathan's both, mm -hmm. would it prohibit us from expanding it later on? If we decided yes, we need to expand, we could expand it later without causing a problem. Okay. Okay. And I'm talking about going all the way down Mill Street, out, out to the other. I was thinking to the train station. Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking that too. I was, that's what I was thinking. But right now there's nothing there. So that's why I was asking, could you extend that at a later date if it starts to develop down there? Could you put an extension there where it goes down? You generally speaking, probably want to start, this option two is a little bit broader, but you want to probably try to keep it as compact as possible until you actually have the need to go further reason being that you could actually stimulate some things in locations that you find out later on maybe you maybe didn't want to have there. Uh, and, and plus, you know, a district tends to be a fairly localized description. If it gets too broad, it starts looking more like a zone or a, a region as opposed to a localized, small, compact area. Fort Worth is even, you know, they could actually make an argument the entire downtown area is an entertainment district, but they're not doing that. They're looking at a much narrower focus. So I would say that you'd probably want to limit it to where you have true entertainment today and then expand it as you need to. Yeah, to that, uh, the Elm Street right there, is that where the new condominium start? That below, just south of or north of him, right there. This is the new track right here. That's the new track. Oh, okay. I think no, I think one of the north on Charles. With the Mitchell Martin did. That's what I'm calling it. North. That's what south. Oh, south. I'm sorry. You're right. South, south. Okay, so it's south there. Okay. I didn't want to go down there, did you? Okay, okay. No. That's what I was doing. Okay. Yeah, Where is the town? We got these town homes here, but this is the in fact we've got some over here. 
here in pass. This is the uh, whole team. Yeah. But you're not putting any in that <laughs> No, but you're, you'd be exempting businesses from here. That's largely where some of the plants come from. But that's not substantially different if you go back to last year. No, no, no. Not a whole lot different. Yeah. Okay. Any other discussion? Have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Now, what about enforcement? And on this one, you what you're directing us to do is come back to you with an ordinance right. and see this again. So, so we want Somebody adjacent to the entertainment district is going to complain about the noise, you know, the loud music. So they're going to call us. Like we flipped the whole thing over. Let's use that as an example. They call us. And we tell them, well, look, they're allowed to go until 11, you know, until 11 p.m. tonight. You know, call us back. If it's 11 1, you still hear playing. And then we'll go over and we'll run up tickets or tell them to set up or, or whatever you have to do. So do you need a motion for direction? Well, yeah, which one do you kind of want us to do? Uh, to focus on, we have to draft some language. It's more specific. I'd like, like to move the staff brings us an option four with some dates and times. I motion by Council Gilmore for staff to draft option four. Yeah, second by Council Brennan. Any more discussion? All favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you, Chief. Good work. Appreciate Thanks, all that.